I want to be a life champion. On the mat, off. Things didn't add up the way I maybe thought they would. So, I made changes, I made fixes. If the things around you don't change, change the things that are around you. Nick Soriano. He's accomplished about everything one can accomplish in high school. Four-time undefeated New Jersey State champion. Four-time Beast of the East champion. And a Super 32 champion. You know, he's not your typical wrestler that's plodding forward. I mean, he's bouncing, he's fast. He almost looks like a boxer out there. There's a single uh, good finish by Soriano. Suriano is currently ranked number one in the NCAA at 125 pounds. Last year, he shocked the wrestling world when he announced that he was transferring from Penn State to Rutgers. Is Suriano going to Penn State? Going back to Penn State? Is he not? Penn State is the number one team in the country. Look what they just did. How can you not like that? To have them leave this program, the current best program, it's pretty shocking. I don't give a damn what, what the numbers say. That's my answer to those people. Well, we gotta fight every second, win every single second. Fearless warrior, prepare for battle. Fearless warrior, don your armor. Fearless warrior, hold your head up high. Fearless warrior, remember, you don't always have to be fearless. Nick Soriano is one of the most interesting guys in all of NCAA wrestling. He's got this unique, intense personality. He transferred from Penn State to Rutgers. On top of that, Penn State's coming here to wrestle a dual meet. And how's Nick going to respond? Is he going to get a little nervous and tense up? Is he going to have a chip on his shoulder? Or will it be business as usual? We're here to find out. What's up, Nick? What's up, Bader? How are you? Good to see you again. Likewise. How's it going? This is your place? This is it. It's my right. apartment over here. Sweet. So, uh, what, we got? We got class. We got class. Acting class. Acting class. That's correct. For real? Yes. You want to be an actor? Uh, I'm just, hey, man, I'm tapping into some other stuff. I have a lot of interests. Uh huh. Uh, so maybe you guys get to know me a little better. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I'm let's really looking forward to it. Yeah, let's oh. go. How'd you get interested in like acting class? Um, I like to be in the spotlight. I like to dig deep and f and, and pull it out of myself. Uh -huh. And acting, and uh, surprisingly, it's I, I can relate it to wrestling from from what I'm understanding. Um, it's it's on you. You gotta pull it when 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 it gets stale and whatever. You gotta pull it out of yourself. Like, why do you like it so much? And did you think you would like it this much? Yeah, I knew I would love it. And you, you think about life, you know, situations. Hardships, memories, uh, you know, yeah. positive stuff, and it shapes you to the people we are, and it's awesome. Hey guys, you can come on down. Sorry about that. No, not a problem. Hey, Morning. how's it going? Good. How are you? These are uh, it's flow wrestling. These are, guys. These are the guys. Hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah, Mark, nice to meet Mark, you. Nice. Tony. Tony, Pleasure. nice to meet you. Heard great things. Well, <laughs> let's hope. We'll see. Yeah. All right, come on in, you guys. Can we get the lights on. So, uh, my poem's called Fearless Warrior. Fearless Warrior, prepare for battle. Stand your ground. Fearless Warrior. I'm from Primus, New Jersey. Um, Jersey kid, my whole life. Played a lot of sports growing up. I played baseball, soccer, football. I started wrestling when I was about seven or eight. I think I had some talent just from the beginning. I think I went like 30 and one my first year. I, I guess a natural is what you'd call it. I just loved it from the beginning. I always was competitive, you know, and uh, I didn't go to States my first year, but my second year of wrestling I did and I won. I won the States, so I was a pretty good little youth wrestler. At wrestling, I like to put my hands on people. I like to feel it myself. I like to think about it, visualize. It, it's just, it's a little more personal. And that's, that's, I thrive off that. I'm 
my high school career, I went 159 and 0, four-time state champ. I won the Super 32 twice in high school. You know, I won the Beast of the East. I was the first one from my high school to do that. I think the recruiting really started my sophomore year. Iowa, Nebraska. You know, they're a little far. It was a little much for my mind, and I was like, hey, I got everything I need around here. Penn State is the best fit, and. Uh, you know, Kale recruited me real hard, and uh, they were they were hot. Since you've been here on campus, you know, how would you describe your style and kind of your approach to competition? Um, I'd say forward, forward, always constantly moving forward and uh, trying to score and pressure guys. Uh, I go in to win. I, I, every competition I'm going in to get my hand raised. Once I got to Penn State, um, I was excited. I was excited to start right away. That was the plan. I knew that was. I knew I was going to start. Um, I was excited to chase my my dreams on the mat, off the mat, get better as a person. Got his elbow trapped a little bit, and now he muscles him over. Chases his tail on the other side, gets a takedown. I, I got some signs that it might not be for me early on. I guess that's the best way to put it. But I start, I was like, hey, maybe it's just a change. It's just something a little different that I'm not used to. Different atmosphere, different culture. My goal was to be a true freshman NCAA champ. That was the focus. That was the goal. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that was the main focus. Honestly, that was it. And it got stripped when, when I got hurt. We're underway 125 pounds in the orange for Oklahoma State. It's Nick Piccinini. Soriano in the blue for Penn State. Nice hard clubs, physical hand fighting. It was serious. It was a huge crowd, rowdy. You know, there was a lot of people there. Got to push through it. Got to pull this one out. It's a big. It's a big matchup, and for the team, it's for the title. It's for the number one spot. There's oh, there! Gets Penn State gets in on a shot. Head on the inside single. He circles the corner, and wow! What hips? What defense? Great pressure by Soriano. See, two one at the end of the first. Look, like Soriano's got a scratch underneath his left eye. You know, it was just another match. I was focused. Everything was, my, I did everything, you know, the same as I would at any other match. Fighting the hands, but behind the arms for Piccinini. And now Suriano cuts away and earns the escape. And he's hopping. Did something happen? I rolled my ankle. And he's shaking his head kind of like. Oh, uh oh, oh. This is huge, Christian. This is huge. I know. And he's got this look on his face. My conscience, I don't know the word, just went black a little bit, went nothing. I, I almost was in a, another world for a second or two. And I, I, he brought me down flat. And I remember just laying there like, what just happened? Did, did I hurt myself? Like, what happened? Everyone thought I got hurt when I, something happened in midair. My ankle was, I happened on the mat. I escaped with my ankle broken. Uh-oh. Yeah, this ain't good. Is he done? No, he's going to try to wrestle. No way. Heck he, yeah, he's going to wrestle. He, look at him walking. He's going to go? Yeah, he's going to go. I'm going to go back out. That's what I do, man. I'm going to fight. I might as well go down and fight. Fighting. Maybe, maybe it's just shocked. It's, it hurts real bad right now. Maybe in a couple minutes, it'll get better. So throwing a monkey wrench into the storyline right away. You do not want to hurt ankle against Nick Piccinini. I mentioned his speed, and now he's up yeah, and away. Three to two, and, and Suriano's wrestling on one foot. And he's going to smell blood, and they're going to say. And going to stop it. He's going to stop it. The thing is, they're going to call the match. Suriano wasn't going to quit. It hurt me mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Uh, but I knew I was out. I knew I was hurt bad. I knew I would not be ready to compete, you know, in Big Tens for sure. NCAs is probably a long shot. Like, trying to tell myself I will, but I knew there's a difference when you know and you don't say it. And, you know, I knew and didn't say, you know, I was like, all right, we're going to try everything we can to get back. That was really all we could do. 25 pounder on the mat was saying that he felt that he, he broke his yeah. ankle. Do you know what the status is and what um, it is? Well, we, he sprained his ankle. I mean, we're going to get an x-ray just for sure, but 
he's never really been hurt before, so he you know doesn't know what, a, what that feels like. But he'll be uh, he, you, know, you can be back pretty quickly from a sprained ankle, so he'll be fine. And he's got really good uh, trainer and doctor, and he'll be he'll be rolling Big Ten times. I'd say there was differences between there were some differences between maybe what they thought was taking place with me as a person and my injury and what I thought. The next morning we did the x-ray thing. <laughs> and that's when uh, the harsh truth came out. I knew it was broken, but I didn't want to accept it. And uh, the doctor was just like, oh, well. <laughs> he was like, yeah, bad news, Nick. And, you know, look, and I'm like, you see that? You see that little line? It's like pointing at this here. You see that line? I'm like, yeah, what is that? You know, I don't know what the hell. Never look at a bone. It's like, yeah, that's a fracture in, in your ankle. You completely uh, broke your ankle. Everybody was trying to get this to work for the NCAA tournament, you know, so I can go out there and you know wrestle and do what I do and win a title. I decided, as a man, we're not going to get the surgery. We don't need it. We're going to let this bone heal. We're going to take it on the chin like a man. You're out. You got hurt, bud. I mean, we're we going to run and get screws and, and the recovery phase. That it wasn't enough time. They thought a little different than how I thought and. I took it one way, and then I made decisions off of it. This is a question for all the other coaches. Uh, with Suriano being injured, it's obviously an impact on this tournament. And is it just something that is part of the sport? I mean, wear and tear, I mean, that's maybe part of the sport. I don't maybe look at it like that so much. I think uh, in this case, and knowing who Nick Suriano is, we recruited him. Um, I think he gets ready to go, and I think sometimes bad things happen to good wrestlers. Next, Kale Sanderson. Uh, <laughs> poor Nick, everyone. Uh, <laughs> press conference about him. Uh, yeah, and, you know, you get hurt, injuries happen, life happens, right? But life is good, and, and uh, life's good. He's, you know, Nick has a lot to be grateful for, and he has three years to terrorize college wrestling and, and international wrestling after that. So. You know, it is what it, what it is. He, he got injured, it happens, and uh, life goes on. At NCAAs, I'd say, I'd say I was upset, watching, <laughs> really upset, and alone, and just soul searching. After the injury, it was a realization of who I am and where I want to be. I decided, as a junior, I want to be at Penn State. And as things, as events took place and occurred, my mind started to shift. My interest started to curve. My personality, my, my man, who I was as a man, started to change a little bit. Uh, what I wanted, I felt like these people, this place isn't maybe for me. Following the injury, Nick would be unable to compete at the NCAA championships. When Nick didn't register for classes at Penn State the following semester, the rumors started to fly. What's the story? You hear different things. Maybe there was a thing with the injury. There's no resolution. Um, I don't know when there will be a resolution. News that Nick was training in the Rutgers wrestling room threw even more fuel on the fire. After five months, the dramatic play would come to an end and the wrestling community would finally have their answer. This is crazy. Soriano's leaving. During that time, I felt stuck. I felt alone out there. I didn't, something was missing. Support, there was things that were I don't know, just, that's just what came about to me. That's how I took it. I had a dream once in a, in a hotel and I was trapped. I was trapped in the hotel <laughs> and I couldn't get out. And I would just have dreams like that. And it was a dark, it was a dark time. And that was how I was feeling in, the, in life though. And people will say, well, you were winning. You were, you were winning, you were doing great. But it's, nah, man, I, was, I felt trapped out there. And it's nothing, I can't, there's no one to blame. It's just the circumstances of where I was. I called Kale on the phone and said, hey, um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm coming back. I want a permission to talk with Rutgers. Permission to contact is the term. He, nah, he wasn't happy about it. There was a lot of people trying to hold me back. Before we knew, the decision by the Big Ten was finalized. That day came, I got a phone call from Donnie, and he goes, uh, 
You didn't, you didn't, no one, no one contacted you yet? No, he's like this, and real low. I'm like, nah, man, what happened? Like, where, did we, we win? We, we, did we get through? What's up? He's like, it's like it went through. He's like, you won. You fucking won. Nick Suriano going to Rutgers. Cleared, and I guess the biggest news, he's wrestling this year. He is wrestling this year. I just know it was unanimous that every person voted in the committee. All seven voted on um, me to wrestle and compete at Rutgers this year. Let's face it, Penn State, they tried everything they could to not make it happen. That's a fact. It's known. I won because that's what I wanted. And, and thank the Big Ten and thank God for, for, for willing it and making it happen because it was in their hands. I remember hearing about Nick when he was when he was young because he was basically a, a, le, a New Jersey legend in the in the in the junior wrestling at the rec wrestling the kid states and all this. I met him for the first time. I was at Bergen Catholic High School. I was coaching at Michigan at the time. We bumped into Nick in the hallway, and I could tell right away, you know, just his zoned-in state that he's always in. <laughs> As soon as he was announced, it was a huge, huge spike in our program. I think we sold over 2,000 season tickets. Finally, we get to talk about Rutgers. I, I love it here. I'm myself. I'm not trying to be anybody I'm not. My coach, Donnie, he's someone I admire as a man. He's a mentor to me. Uh, his honesty, his, he's just real with me. He understands me. There's no secrets. You know, the way he trains and the way he goes about things, you know he, he wants to be a national champion. You know, people want to see that. They want to see a guy that goes out there like a warrior and is going to score points and beat somebody up. It's a little different culture over here than it is in Happy Valley at State College or in, um, I don't know, somewhere in Oklahoma. You know, Rutgers is always a nice story, you know. Maybe now that they, they, they got this, this guy, maybe they can compete with an Iowa and Penn State, you know, the Missouri, these big time programs. We are, we're getting ready for Penn State, and we're, we're at home. It's a, it's a, that's our rival, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, we have history. Yep. And obviously with, with Nick being, being with us right now and being a number one ranked guy, you know, we're, we're anticipating a huge crowd, a lot of excitement. Um, it's gonna be a hostile environment for them inside our arena. And when we go there, we, we expect a, a hostile environment, so we want our fans to give it right back to them. So we're, we're excited, we're fired up, and, and we're starting at 125. You know, it's a personal sport. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You got to get in your mode. You got to get, and to me, it's getting focused, getting serious, almost getting anxious, feeling it, putting the music on. I like getting in my mode. But I'm thinking about life goals, too. I'm not just thinking about, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not thinking about I'm going to do a two-on-one tie to it. Nah. I know that. I'm thinking about living a good life. I'm thinking about maybe driving an exotic car. Yeah, keeping my mind open, like a Lamborghini, if you're wondering. I'm thinking about get my hand raised in an NCAA final. I'm thinking about, I'm also thinking about shaking little kids' hands after the match. Like, I love that. Seeing little kids admire and look up to me, it's an awesome feeling. Like, it never gets old. Nick's preparation before a dual meet is very consistent every time. He comes in from his apartment at the same time. He knows exactly what his warm up's gonna be like. He wants his weight exactly in the same spot so he can get a good hard warm up and he usually goes for about an hour. But throughout the whole week, this is a little bit different because he, he had, a, um, I'd say, a little more um, focus and almost anxiety a little bit, I would say, because he's gonna see his former coach and his former teammates and I think that's a lot that's a lot for him to, to take on, but he's, he's handled it very well, and he's excited for the moment. He's excited to, to hear the New Jersey people get behind him. When Penn
Penn State, the team came in with Kale, the squad. Uh, I had, listen, I was in the corner over, I was in the back over there, I had my headphones on, I was pacing back and forth, getting my body, getting my presence, just becoming aware of where I'm at now, because I don't like to just pull my shoes on and go warm up. I like to get into it a little bit, shake it out, roll out, do what I do, what I like to do. And that was paced back and forth, but when I saw, obviously I expected them, we knew they are coming in, so I was prepared. And uh, when it hit me, I didn't get negative vibes or any of that. It was a little uptight. People were looking you know, with their eyes a little bit. There's no reason for that, but that's, that's, that's how it is. No grudges on anyone, just being myself. Um, that's really how I took it. Just worry about me, you know? Don't get caught up in that. All right, but we gotta fight every second. Win every single second of the match, all right? Get in your hand, Razor will take care of itself. Let's go. Pride, baby. Our Father. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The key for me is no thinking. Thinking nothing. It's a Japanese Zen type of technique that the warriors used. Think nothing. That's that's the, that's what it is. I think it all it all relates. Whether it's wrestling, whether it's whatever you do, ran raise. But it's like wow. Until I get off the mat, then I'm in their world. When I'm on the mat, I'm in my world. Think nothing. First match of the evening at 125 pounds. That's going to be Nick Suriano for Rutgers. And for Penn State, the man who replaced him, Devin Schnupp. Moving here. Good snap from Suriano. He transitions. Nice job straight on into the single leg. Let's see if he can finish. Cuts across and it's a takedown. First 10 seconds and the Scarlet Knight takes the lead. Shot from Snup, defended by Suriano. He circles one way, now the other goes behind, earns the takedown, and has a 6-2 lead here in the first period. And I wasn't trying to put on a show and do any dirty wrestling or, or you know, bloody the guy or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, just because I left Penn State and try to make it a show, none of that. I'm gonna wrestle it the same way. Whistles start, and Suriano underneath comes up to his feet, looking to earn the escape, and he does. And now a shot from Schnupp. An attack from Suriano, and a throw by for Nick Suriano. He scores the takedown and is really starting to pour it on here. Yes. Another shot from Suriano, and he's gonna go pancake. Suriano's on a roll. And another takedown for Suriano. The takedowns just keep coming. And Suriano's got him in trouble. There it is, fall, Nick Suriano, your winner at 125 pounds. Kind of just raise my hand, I'm still in the moment, I want to run off the mat. When I take the Sigma down, get a sip of water or something, then it's like, wow, all right. It was like a wave of just joy and satisfaction. I'm real happy with how the team how the team performed, man. There was some good wrestling going on. I think it's now seen on a national level now, like, hey, like these guys uh, come to scrap. Yo, how'd that feel? How'd that feel? How'd that feel? How'd that feel? Awesome. Yeah, no doubt. Come on. You destroyed them, and then you killed them. In my head, I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to improve. It's, it never ends. It's never good enough. Someone can say you're crazy, that's a disease. I don't know, it keeps me ticking though. I'm here to make history. I have life goals and ambitions. Saturday night in Cleveland, it's to get your hand raised in the NCAA Finals. Him winning a national title would be vindication for last year. He really felt like he got robbed. I'm not looking for the world's approval. It's not that, it's just try to inspire us. That's what I live to do. 
when he first was coming to Rutgers, I think he felt like there's a lot of people out there that are doubting him as to whether he can get the job done here. We all have our fears. Stand strong, go chase your dreams, but still know you're human. Be fearless with your goals.